Things are going from bad to worse for Flintlock, the Siege of Dawn, the Sweet Baby Inc. infected game that was developed by A44 and published by Kepler Interactive. By my calculations, the game has lost nearly 70% of its player base in just over a week. Before we get to this, I'd like to ask you, please hit that subscribe button, hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos here at the Trent Report. Wrote this up over at thatparkplace.com. And if we look at the Steam DB numbers, you can see that the game hit a peak concurrent player base of 648 when it released on July 18th. About 10 days. It's been about 10 days. We're, we're looking at July 29th here. 10, 11 days. Just a little over a week since the game has released. That peak concurrent now sits at 203. That is nearly a 70% decline. I think it's like 68%. Wow. That is how dead this game is. The game was already dead on arrival, but it is now six feet underground. The people that purchased this game are no longer playing it. It's not surprising that the player base has declined. If you go over to, to Steam, you look at the reviews. It does show that it has mostly positive reviews. But if you look at the two most recent reviews or that are, or at least the, the two reviews that are labeled as the most helpful reviews in the last seven days, they're both negative. The first one, the top one from semi literate ape reads like this. This game feels unfinished. The store page describes it as souls light. And that's what it is in the worst possible ways. Light on the build depth and variety light on the difficulty light on the content and length of the damn game. I completed the main story, including all side quests, all Iniki feathers, and all shrines in 11.6 hours. I played on normal, so maybe the hard difficulty is more of a challenge, but the big bosses were trivial. Even the final boss fell over pretty quick, and the story is nothing to speak of. Oh, and the game kept crashing for me. Thankfully, the game seems to save its state before exiting, even on a crash, so I never lost any progress. Don't get me wrong, I had some fun. I wouldn't have spent 11.6 hours on it if there was no fun to be had. It's particularly satisfying to switch between melee and ranged combat relatively fluidly or to shoot a suspiciously well-placed explosive barrel to clear a pack of enemies. But that fails to make up for everything the game lacks. He then concluded, Overall, I think this game is criminally undercooked. The concept and world had decent potential and the combat isn't terrible either. So given a few more years of development, I could see this game being pretty good. Sadly. What we got was just mediocre on almost all levels. I wouldn't suggest you pay much more than $10 for it. Again, this was the most helpful review in the past seven days. Here was the second most helpful review. This one from Nachi Demon or Nachi Diamond. The game is not terrible. It looks great and I've had no performance issues. However, I can't recommend it because the balance is simply terrible. The game can't decide whether it wants to be Assassin's Creed or a Souls game, so it veers wildly and unexpectedly between difficulties in a way that I found persistently irritating. Most of the time, the game is Assassin's Creed, a fun game that requires little technical gaming expertise. In Flintlock, you follow the quest marker, parkour over obstacles that are clearly marked in white, or zip through rifts that give you an infinite amount of time to choose your direction. If you wander around, you find resources or hidden treasure chests. The game might be more like God of War, but the writing in Flintlock is so dull that I don't want to make the comparison. Flintlock's writing is dull like Assassin's Creed Valhalla is dull. But from time to time and without warning, the game turns into a Souls-like game. The parkour in the Black Powder Factory, for example, is not really difficult, but if you haven't fallen to your death one million times in Elden Ring to get the thumbprint shield, you might not be used to missing your jumps. The game does not prepare you for the first boss fight, for example, which has three phases and requires good pairing skills. That's not a bad thing if the rest of the game had the same vibe, but it doesn't. It goes on and says, I love the Parade Master fight in Liza P. It was engaging and taught you about the game you were about to play. I don't like the swings and difficulty in Flintlock. The combat in its open world is from a different game than the boss combat. And I'm not an impatient player. It took me two days to learn to dodge and beat Consort Radon and four days to learn to kill the Nameless Puppet. 
But Flintlock doesn't inspire me to put the time in because the game as a whole doesn't inspire that kind of commitment. If its gameplay were more cohesive or its story more interesting, I might feel differently. Perhaps the devs will return to the game in an update. So those are the two reviews that are marked as the most helpful reviews on Steam in the last seven days. Both of them negative. We've also got Cabrutus Rambo, the founder of the Sweet Baby Inc. Detective Steam Curator List. He has been playing this game over on his YouTube channel. Did a live stream of it, which he has subsequently, subsequently privated. But uh, this is what he posted on X. He says, Flintlock is terrible. Ugh. So, not surprising that players are dropping this game like a bad hat. Not surprising at all. Negative reviews. And clearly, there isn't a lot to do in the game. So, there doesn't seem to be any kind of replayability. So, you're not going back into it. The game is very short. So, that's why we're seeing... 70%, nearly 70% decline in the player base. And we knew the game was going to have anemic numbers to begin with. We were at like, what, less than 1,000, less than 700. What did it do? Let's go, scroll back. I was like six something. 648 is what it peaked at with concurrent. And we knew that was going to be the case because this game is Sweet Baby Inc. infected. And when a game is Sweet Baby Inc. infected, players gamers are not going to purchase it and we knew it was sweet baby ink infected because the former coo of a44 audrea tops harjo confirmed it to edge magazine this is what edge magazine reported for flintlock it was tops harjo who brought on kim belair the montreal-based narrative director who has advocated for better representation in stories as a means of bringing new and exciting ideas to games she is the ceo of sweet baby ink kim belair Harjo also explained she took the wonderful base layer Derek had, the world, and just elevated it. You know the difference when there's a person who's reflecting at you and it's true. There's a certain truth that resonates that can't be faked. I know some people won't notice, but the people who are tuned to that, they'll get it immediately. So clearly indicating that this game was full of woke ideology that Kim Belair injected into the game, infected the game with. In fact, Harjo admitted that the game's narrative was full of woke ideological propaganda. Those gods are almost a symbol of colonialism. They are people who have taken over your agency. What do you do when you wrestle with that structure to find and gain your own identity? It's still a game. It's still gods and guns. But when you look at it from that lens, there's another layer on top of that. From Noor being a woman of color, it makes the character and the dynamic even more an echo of reality. So pushing the whole... Woke ideology, victim narrative. And this was all shared here by Cabrutus Rambo uh, back in March. The uh, excerpt from Edge magazine. If you want to look at that a little bit closer, I will have the link in the description below. Something else that I will have in the link below is a link to John Della Rose's Kickstarter for his upcoming graphic novel, The Hidden Emperor. The Hidden Emperor is a follow-up to Della Rose's graphic novel, Overmind, which I think is his best graphic novel. It tells the story of Ayla Wren, a top-secret agent for the Imperium. Here is a brief description of the upcoming graphic novel. Ayla Wren, agent of the Terran Imperium, returns to face a new sinister plot against the Imperium. Something is amiss with the Emperor of Mankind. Ayla Wren discovers he's been replaced by a clone who's intentionally sabotaging the Imperium on behalf of the evil Scorpio Alliance. But worse, the Scorpio Alliance knows she knows, and that means blackmail. Ayla is forced to find a secret superweapon that could unleash devastation on the Imperium. I am definitely looking forward to this. Like I said, Overmind is my favorite graphic novel that John De La Rose has written. And I'm really looking forward to what he is doing in this book and expanding this universe as well, because he's also introducing his Space Marines, which will have a spin-off series as well. Uh, in fact, this is going, there's a lot of stuff that's really interesting in this, uh, but he just passed, I think, what is he? He just passed his 20,000 mark here. Yep, 20,000 mark here. And that means that we will be getting a, a really cool story written by none other than Battletech author Blaine uh, Pardo. 
So you can see here, uh, bonus pages, process sketches, added to the Hidden uh, Emperor book with a deep look inside Aileron's life, and some fun meme art, uh, art Miss Crimson created in the process. If we get to 25000 we get the uh, Blaine Pardo short story here. It says, we'll do a pro short story in the universe featuring one of the Terran Imperium's space marines. And uh, he said that, that that author would be revealed at 20K. He did indeed reveal it, and that author is Blaine Pardo. So I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, definitely will be a palate cleanser if you happen to play Flintlock, the Siege of Dawn, which is clearly injected with the woke ideology and no one is really interested in. So let me know what you guys make of what's going on here with Flintlock, the Siege of Dawn. The fact that it has lost nearly 70% of its player base in just over a week. What an absolute disaster for this game. But it, it's, it's what they get. It is what they deserve. It is justice for embracing Sweet Baby Inc., and pushing woke ideology. This stuff does not sell, sell, and gamers are not interested in it. And in fact, when gamers do seemingly purchase it, the ones that do don't like it either, and they regret their purchase and don't recommend it to others. So let me know what you guys make of this. Let me know in the comments below. Remember to always be charitable, especially to each other, but to always speak the truth.